Here's a quick video for my friend Jeff about decals or something like that in Blender. So Blender doesn't really have the concept of decals, but they are often used in video games as something to easily project something else onto an existing shader. So you don't have to change the shader because that would be costly. If you think about something like bullet holes on a wall that already has a texture on it, it would take too much time and cost too many computing resources to switch out that shader and put on something else. And you also don't really know where the bullets are going to impact the wall. So that's where they use these decals. It's a projection. So this is in Substance Painter here just to show the principle. It's a projection like this. So the white thing is the decal and you can move it around and spawn it wherever you like it. And that is basically the, the principle. And iRay supports it and Unreal Engine supports it. Unity does and Blender does not. But Blender has a, another good thing that that works a little better because we can use this as a separate object. So decals also have a problem because if I go too high, the projection only really comes from one side. So this is what happens if you hit the edge of an object. It just doesn't look great. There's no, it doesn't look convincing. You can't, you can of course uh, move it around. So in this case, you could just go and project it from a 45 degree angle like this if you needed it on something like the edge so you can make that happen but it's it's a projection so it has its limitations so blender doesn't have it because it's a rendering effect uh, or blender doesn't have it as far as i know but we can use the next best thing which is called a shrink wrap modifier i'm going to show you how to set this up from scratch just so that you know what we do this is the object that is a uh, a grid here so you can use a regular plane for this but you have to subdivide it you have to give it enough information or, or just vertices so that it can bend and stretch and you would go and add that up here and then go and give it a target namely say the sphere here and then that plane goes and deforms and the cool thing is you can now go ahead and move the plane and it sort of sticks on the object no matter how deformed it is there's a little bit of an offset in there much like we would do with geo shells in dash studio and if you move it too much then you can see it just can't really can't really catch up so really what you want to do to position this is uh, like if I, I can go and apply to the cylinder here now but that's going to look awful because it just you know it, it was too far away from the cylinder so the origin point of the object that you're transferring has something to do with that so the idea is that you bring it into close proximity to where you want this uh, let's say sort of here and then uh, bring it as close as you can and then just use the extra mile so to say with the shrink wrap modifier like so and that of course also works with images on there i've got one um, with the alpha channel projected here and i can go and stretch that out so that it goes and you know looks looks the part there's a little dinosaur that brian's helped me out so thank you so much brian so that's why that's why that says thanks brian there and uh, uh, yeah that's how shrink wrap modifiers work let me go and set this up from scratch so you can go and follow along I'm going to make a brand new project here in Blender 4.3. I'm going to go and remove the timeline. I don't even have a default cube in here. And let me go and create a grid. So rather than a plane, let's make a grid. And the good thing about a grid is you can give it the subdivision that you want. So 10 by 10 is plenty. And I'm going to go and turn that on its axis and also bring that up by one and then i'll make sure that the origin point is at the object it is already but just in case it is not make sure it is on the object object geometry so set origin to geometry that's that's the idea i'm going to go bring this forward a little bit and or maybe even forward even more and then i'll go and make myself a cylinder here i'll use the default values bring that up a little bit and maybe maybe stretch that out like like so and maybe also make that make that slightly taller go and apply those transformations and just so that we can tell it apart i'm going to go give this a material nothing super fancy in fact no material at all i'm just going to give it a viewport color here just so that we can see that they're in fact two different objects this one i will give a material later but just go and let's let's do let's do this here so in the easiest way then is we just click that little modifiers icon here and we give our grid a deform modifier in this case it's the shrink wrap and it will ask us a couple of things the target and the offset and those are the, the most important things to know about so the target in this case can just be my cylinder pick it or just use the eyedropper and you can see that when you do that you get this ugly z fighting here and that is because 
the vertices are intersecting. There's two things we can do about that. So the first one is that the either object can have a subdivision surface modifier to make them smoother, but also you can set the offset here. So right now they're too close together. So if we just go in, into the positive direction here, just one or two steps, we're still very close by, but it's not intersecting anymore. So if you go and stretch that out, you might get more Z fighting, in which case you can increase the offset more or decrease it to as flat as you need to be. But this is also going to change the moment you give these guys some uh, subdivision surface modifier. So if I go and just use this here and add under generate subdivision surface modifier, then it looks much better. I can go and shade that smooth as well. And this now looks, there's no edges anymore. And I can do the same thing on the underlying object if that isn't round enough for me. If I go into shade that smooth and that still doesn't look great, I can go and give this subdivision surface modifier and that doesn't look great. Do you know why? Jeff isn't into modeling, but this is because that object doesn't have any edge loops to hold it in place. So you can either add those manually or you can add a bevel modifier to it that needs to be at the top of the stack and then you, you know, avoid that. I mean, it still doesn't look great at the top here, but that's probably because we just we, we just add some edge loops there and then, then we're good. But yeah, that's that's how that works. And if you go and add a shader to this, if I go into, my, into this view here and then go and just give it a different, a different color here. And this guy, we're gonna go and give an actual picture. Then you can see that the alpha channel is retained. So we're gonna go and use an image texture from my desktop, which is thanks, Brian. <laughs> and the color goes into here and the alpha channel, this is without the alpha channel applied, the alpha channel goes into here and then boom, we have it. And then that is basically as good as a projection here. That's how you do that. That is how you handle that. Uh, that's really, that's all there was to it, wasn't it? That is, that's that's as much as I can tell you about the shrink wrap modifier. If you go and make another object like an icosphere, bring that over, make that bigger, bring that up perhaps, something like that, and then shade that smooth as well, and also add a, another subdivision surface modifier to that here. You can go and relinquish the shrink wrap modifier from this object here. Just go and untick the target here and move it away like so. Then pick yourself the other one and then it gets projected onto here. So that's pretty much all there's to it. And that'll give you the option to have a different object that isn't defined in the shader and then you can reuse it on multiple other objects. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.